walking away for now, denying that's going to be the body slam initial. They're going to fall immediately with damage. First blood for the Kha'Zix on the top side. Right now in trouble, flashing out to safety. He desperately needs to get this kill. He gets it with a W back in return. But Caps is here too. It's a house party on the top side of the map, and PSG were not invited. And this is, if you did not watch LEC Meta, Greg is an absolute menace. Oh, oh it's the alley oop. He should just stay as the cause because he does so much damage. It's getting lower, and he takes it. PSG. Oh, just like every game in their own region. Take it from okay? Yeah. We really took uh, really fast decisions. Let's, let's think more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Good job. Good job. Nice comeback. Okay. What again? You are 100% correct, Caps. Nice comeback. To be fair, you threw and then needed to come back, so there's we'll content take it. missing. <laughs> we are about 10 or so minutes away from game number two. So what I wanted to do was take a look at that one, try to break down some of the unique things, and I have to start with the draft. First and foremost, surprised by uh, some of the champions coming out, Kha'Zix in particular. I'm going to come to Raz first. What do you think of the draft overall? And then I want Dagda to just highlight and steal all the Kha'Zix stuff. I mean, even when you get jungle going into 4-5 and you lose Vi, Nocturne, Belva, technically Viego because it was picked away. Like, all these picks that go through, you're like, okay, what does he have in the table? Kha'Zix comes through. I like it. The risk was, you already saw the ante. And then the five pick that's coming through that you kind of expect that can be a Malphite. So I was like, ooh, this can be really risky. But it's Yike, and Yike works well around uh, uh, his mid laner early to make it so he doesn't get that late in the game. But yes, we'll talk about how it gets that far later. But I like the fact that they took the risk and it worked out a little bit early. Yeah, and it still feels like we're getting a lot of the, again, facilitators here in that mid lane yes. coming through for Caps. The fact that you get to have that early push that then sets up for you like, to make these early plays. Like, that was kind of the big focus that we had coming into this was, can G2 still play their style? And it looks like PSG struggled with it. What I love about that, can G2 play their style? Can Yike play his style? I mean, at the beginning of the day, you dropped the knowledge bomb about Yike and Kha'Zix. Before I let you go history mode on me, I wanted to show the viewers at home some of the changes that have come in, because I think even Dracos and Mark were joking a little bit about some of those changes, but the damage increase on the Q, the isolation as well, on the range, and the recast duration. I think Mark had one great one. You don't miss the mini Alistair ult in his ult from old version of Kha'Zix. I do, I miss that, because it was <laughs> <Yeah>. busted. <laughs> so the champion has had some changes. We've not seen it. We haven't seen a lot, despite the fact Jack has played in the past. It worked, kind of didn't. What do you think? Yeah, I think it was really interesting to see Yike bring it out because Yike has been a big Kazix player in the past. He, at the moment, he's fit, sitting at fifth, or he's played 15 games. He's 13 wins and two losses all times, so nearly a 90% win rate on the champion. And he was absolutely exceptional in the early stages of this game. And I think a huge portion of this was, as you can see here, Broken Blade moving in to get that early ward down. It gives a ton of information for Yike as exactly where he needs to be. He ends up coming in here mid just to make sure that Kragas can get that push. And even though he spot on the ward. This was a very brave call from G2 that they play excellently on the dive. They focus down the Viego knowing that the Malphite can't do particularly much. Yeah, and he holding TP there. They thought that they could defend the dive just as a two-man. Uh, you can make some critiques there of uh, Viego moving too far to the left, but I thought they just played it so damn well and taking control of the top right side jungle and just punishing uh, them anytime they tried to come through. And again, we're seeing adaptation here from Yike. He ends up just doing one camp off that immediately, or sorry, the two camps top immediately, yeah. and then goes top again. So he takes Blue, Grom, top, gets the kill once more. And this was kind of the story of what we saw a lot of the times where Yike was skipping camps to make sure that he could get up to this bot side. Doesn't manage to escape away on this one, but again then, on the next one, he ends up dying, goes mid to catch the wave as um, Caps had gone to roam towards the bot side. And then as Caps comes mid again, you can see he's actually giving up where his red spot not going for the croaks on the bottom side. He wants to make this play happen. This is a great understanding here from Caps. He recognizes that Yubao is trying to cut through the uh, red side jungle to try and help out, make it a three-man play this time around. They're like, okay, we're just changing target and going on you now. So they really punished uh, PSG in the early portions of the game. Now, of course, when we were preparing for this post-match, yeah. there was an opportunity to look at a new pick, look at something that Yike is known for, something that you literally crystal balled a little earlier today. You did. And at the time we were preparing this and discussing it, this game was over. I mean, G2 had such a gigantic lead. You can see like the stats, the advantage that Yike had built up. And it's just started to go wrong. Can I take a look at the gold graph here on the post-game breakdown? Because do we have that, to? Uh, uh, yes, we do. Of course <laughs> we, we do. To. <laughs> I, need to, I need to berate Caps for the comeback? Excuse me? Look at Mount Everest that he jumped off near to come back. I mean, Dagda, should it have ever happened that way? Nah, it really shouldn't have. The fact that you end up giving over so much control, especially at that Baron, yeah. the fact it went badly the first time and you were like, yeah, sure, let's just do it again. It can't uh, go wrong. Flip it one more with, time. Yeah, with no Gragas ultimate, with none of these setups that you really want to do. And I think this is where you really start to feel the wheels come off of the G2 hype train because 
you could look at Yike and go, yes, we got these early leads, but they couldn't really facilitate the Kazakhs in these fights because they weren't looking for picks. The Kazakhs felt a bit wonky. Can I give a, can I give a content warning to all viewers at home? What you're about to see is a throw. <laughs> oh, uh, Rez, please talk me through this first Baron throw by G2. Yeah, for me, my <laughs> eyes are actually just on Yike uh, on the Kazakhs because I, don't know, I thought initially this was a good look. Problem is that he stays pretty far behind. Actually, this was the moment where they split targets here. And so they get the first blow up. Yeah, the fact they end up splitting means Broken Blade goes down. You're in a terrible position here as Han Sam as well, because you immediately have to flash over the wall. And it's just Caps who's able to escape. Now, Caps does manage to reset TP back in. But then it's this second attempt where after Caps has already got one of these kills with the, the ultimate, you start to question it. Because now Caps doesn't have the ultimate then for the upcoming fight. You've already invested a lot of those ultimates as well to try and make this initial play work. And that's where they start to, again, so just red. overextend. Yeah. Okay, now, once again, parental advisory. I do need to move on to the second Baron throw here. Another uh, one. Dagda, take me through this one, as then we'll turn our attention to the pre-match. Yeah, and I think this was the one that Raz was kind of highlighting as well, was that as you're starting to come into this, you don't really have a lot of these guilds was available, like your ultimate on the Rakan, the Zaya, the Gragas, they're all wasted already. And then immediately, you just Kazix walks to the back of the pit and just gets immediately ulted by Annie. I think all you needed was either Rakan or the Gragas to be behind the pit if you wanted to stop the 50-50 from happening, but this is where he just gets completely blown up just by being that far close to the actual Annie. So then it feels really bad. <laughs> and then the game is thrown up into the ether where you feel like, okay, G2 had control for the majority of it, but it's just minor execution errors that turn into major deficits. Yeah, I mean, Junja's in, out, in, out, and shaking G2 all about it. He manages to get the massive steal in the Baron. He gets a bunch of these kills. And once you end up with the Baron in this situation, that's where you really start to feel the hurt of, oh, we can't really look for picks in the same way we were with, you know, Yike and Caps trying to work for it in the top side jungle. And then the team fighting that we talked about for PSG that has been so steady this entire time really starts to shine. Since I punished the viewers with two parental advisory, you know, throws, you gave I them would good like warning. to, I did give them, but now I'd like to celebrate. So let's look at this final fight where G2 do eventually win this out. I don't necessarily want to break it down because we've gone into a lot of detail. Gentlemen, can I ask you to give me now the macro thoughts, right? I, obviously, we're impressed with the early game from G2. I thought the roving from Caps was good. I'm going to be disappointed at the throw or the lack yeah. of control, but I'm also not too surprised. The champions are difficult. Broken Blade of his 400 odd games has only played 16 ever on Kennen. It's not something that you traditionally associate. So. Now as we wrap this up, let's summarize the thoughts here and look ahead to the next game. What did G2 have to clean up? What did PSG have to do? First things first, I mean, a lot of it playing around Baron, these are st small mistakes where it is turning into uh, obviously costly errors, but it's lessons that you need to learn right now. It's really early times in the tournament. Obviously, if you make mistakes too often, then you can just be kicked out quite early and you have to play a little bit more reserved. But I think making these mistakes, if this is the style that they want to play, and this is really the only style that they have pushed forward, then just refine it, work on it, just stick to it. So I think it's good. I think they'll try and draft similarly. It doesn't have to be the Kha'Zix. It could be the Nidalee again. Playing towards Yike has worked for them in the past, and it feels like they are they can have a deep pool if they're banning five junglers and still working for them. On the side of PSG as well, I will really want to see them just go for late game. If you actually think of that like well massive throw that we've got from G2, if that was a Jinx, that would have been a very different game. Yeah. Suddenly you got this Jinx that's got all these kills. She can then position in team fights, and you can play towards the strengths for PSG talent, those late game fights. So I was kind of surprised to see the Lucian. I want to see them fall back to just this late game skating that they've been so favorable. I can literally see Jacobs jump, jumping for joy because Lucian Nami lost again. He continues to be validated. He's a Lucian hater. If it hater. wasn't Jinx, it would have picked up that win. All right, gentlemen, PSG have selected blue side. Final, uh, final thoughts here on champions before we go to casters. Uh, I really think we're going to have this. Scaling, the full you, you literally I, well, no, I think it's going to be the full way. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be. I think G2 should keep the same. I think we already mentioned the scaling. Kennen will not be open. I think it's too broken right now in the patch. Okay. And even though we haven't seen too much of Broken Blade being able to play it, I think there's a reason for that. Yeah, broken, Broken Blade Kennen. Let's find out. We jump into a draft a number two with Jacob and Mark Z. Mark Z. It's going to oh, be yeah, back brother. here. Yes, certainly is. I think the big question for me is uh, last game, PSG triple banned. G2 specific picks, targeted bans. So what? Like, you gotta let something through. Are you letting through Draven? Are you letting through Darius? Are you letting through Nautilus? Like, what? What makes it through the net? Because seemingly G2 is happy to play tennis with you in terms of just throwing target bans back and forth and leaving the meta basically wide open. Well, now that you're on blue side, you can kind of keep the same ban strategy and see if G2 are going to do that as well yeah. on red side. Uh, I don't think that they will. So you might see some more Lucian bans out, stuff like that. If not, I think you can 
maybe just kind of leave it up and, and see what they want to do. You know, Hans is not really a Lucian Ami player. He does have four games of it. He can, of course, play it, but uh, does not speak to exactly what I think his strengths would be uh, for the team. And so I think, you know, this will be a, a very different game from game one. I think for PSG, you'll see a lot of the same bands, but I think they'll come in with a very different strategy and draft. Ajay, for example, does not really play a ton of Malphite. He usually likes to play like weak side, bruisery carry things. Yeah. So he has a lot more games on Cassante, Nar, uh, Jax, he even plays Kennen himself, you know. So like, I, I don't think he'll want to play this weak side, semi self counter pick a little bit. Like, yeah, you can trade cues with the Kennen. Like if you are playing versus a bad Kennen, you can actually win the lane with an all in at six if he's been poked out and stuff like that. But realistically, um, I would like to see Ajit playing one of his, his better champions and uh, look for some more favorable lanes early on while it was a very early game oriented team. It's not like a lot of them had insane laning phases versus their particular matchups. Yeah, very true. It's a lot more about getting that pressure in lane, roaming out, and breaking open lanes with, with man advantages. So keeping our eyes on uh, winning lanes, essentially. What lanes that G2 or PSG are going to be able to get the push in early on and how they want to leverage that pressure. G2, interestingly, the ones actually able to ban whatever they like in this context. Right now banning two of the three, or two champions from the composition previously presented outside of PSG. PSG adjusting. They're going to leave the Darius open, but they're going to take away the Rakan. I, I like it just because of how much playmaking Rakan can bring to the table, but now the Kennen's gonna hit the bench. It seems like G2 recognize that this pick in general is just too powerful. So if they can't first pick it, they are gonna take it off the board. Yeah, a lot of those are pretty standard red side bands as well, Lucian Annie. Yeah, it's table. actually true. It's like I, I, like I'm lulled into a false sense of what this means left, because left with up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're right, those are just the most normal bands we've ever seen. <laughs> I'm like, look at these target Wow, bands. big reaction. G2 terrified of, oh wait a minute. Yeah, yeah wait yeah. a second. These are the most conventional bands possible. Vi, first pick left up though, uh, something that we saw a lot in the previous series series actually and yes. something that BLG was able to use quite well. Well, and I am a huge, huge fan, uh, probably like just about everybody else in Professional League of Legends of Vi Ari. Just what an incredible duo. Vi Wukong is the hype I know for so long, but I think Wukong much higher uh, ceiling in theory, but you know, much harder execution overall. The Vi, the Ari, such a reliable way to get things kicked off. and. Yike, he's not going to try the Kha'Zix, but this time around he'll pick up the Viego for himself. And again, this is his most played champion in his career. This is the champion he is known for. I'm ready to see what he can do on it. I think he saw Jinjia having some fun with it and was like, wait a minute, I can do that better. Why am I playing Kha'Zix? I can play Viego, and then it's like I get to play six champions, mine I mean, and whatever they're playing. Especially because, you know, depending on when you evolve your wings, you don't get the fun of bouncing around <laughs> all over immediately, whereas Viego basically has that unlock from six if you start resetting through fights. True. Uh, like we were kind of expecting, though, Waco yes. onto his yes. famous Aphelios. Absolutely amazing player on this champion. Once he gets that Gale Force, you can see some very aggressive usages of that. And no. I. Oh! He's okay. baiting. No, I'm not. They, they played this. I know they this had, was a, this I know was a real. It. This was a real pick. Oh, I okay, believe it, but I, go, he, that's go. why. He, because it's a real pick, Caps knows he can bait us even harder with it. And in terms of synergy, we're looking at two of the strongest mid-jungle duos. Uh, you know, Viego yep. and Lissandra want the exact same thing. Burst down one target, get resets in the fight. For Viego, obviously, the possession. For Lissandra, the frozen thralls. On the opposite side, Ari and Vi want to blow up one person immediately. And it's similar goals, different in how they're going to execute it. But we have teams matching drafts in very similar fashion. Hyperscaling ADs, mids that are there for setup. A uh, bit of difference in terms of how they're going to scale. But overall, very similar compositions. And it seems like G2 are comfortable handshaking on potentially going late, looking more at a team fighting angle. Yeah, the Jinx locked in for Hansama, the Blitzcrank ban to set up a potential Thresh pick or a forced ban on the side of PSG, unless PSG have something else in the tank for Woody to bust out. He does have a fairly large champion pool, a lot of things locked in, but I would expect with the Renata bans as well, setting up very obvious Thresh pick, we'll see if they hit that one here. Otherwise, the Darius ban, which was something that was in the previous game, yeah. first phase, the fact that there was such focus on uh, jungle mid and AD carry means that was able to hit here in the second one, make sure that you can't see that one grabbed up by Broken Blade. Yeah, and even if you know Darius is coming, he's just such a frustrating champion to play against. He's not quite uh, on the scale of Malphite or Scion in terms of an inevitable inevitable value, but he's infinitely more annoying. So it's it's just and a champion you don't like. You don't play against it outside of I was about to say, queue. no one plays against it except Europe. Because <laughs> yeah, you have Adam just running around. Everyone suddenly has a pocket Darius out of nowhere. Yeah, so shout I, out to Adam. Yeah, yeah. Even though not here in Spirit BDS, making their impact felt. He lives on in the ban phase. That ban is for you. Um, now we'll see, it looks like G2 wanting to prioritize lane pressure. And again, it does free up so much room for Mickey to roam. It frees up so much for Yike to invade. So while I totally agree that 
conventional compositions. Maybe not a Thresh, but something like a Tom Kench instead. G2 prioritizing a blind pick that can that can get pushed on the bottom side of the lane. Yep, no surprise with the Thresh band out. Lulu being one of the main things you're going to play with these late game hyper carries. It would have been absolutely snapped up by Woody as well, most likely. Pairs decently with Thelios. Instead, that not being on the table, does get the Leona hard engage. So less about lane prio at this point, wanting to probably meet up with Aji and Yubao, or excuse me, Jinjia and Yubao running around the map, making these picks kind of happen. Uh, Jinx Lulu, while will be very annoying in lane with the pressure that it's able to get, not the most threatening dive unless Caps has been unlocked. Yep. And I think unlocking those solo laners is going to be something we have to keep track of in this game. Top lane was relatively an island in the early game, except for the fact that G2 kept putting pressure up there. Uh, you know, really breaking that open. But if this is going to be a more of a bot lane focus oh, game, slam we'll see it. with Frieza. But that's the Olaf. It was hit a little bit, but ultimately, I think, still just an absolute powerhouse champion. Incredibly, incredibly difficult to play against. If it gets ahead, you will never get to play the game. And Broken Blade really laying down the gauntlet again. You thought you escaped the European topside champion pool, but the Olaf is here, and it's been seen just about everywhere in the world, but mostly because it's been banned away. Yeah, Olaf was starting to take over the meta. It felt like towards the later stages of uh, playoffs, a lot of regions domestically. And so the, the changes came in, but they were not super significant. You know, you're talking about five base damage on Q spam, a little bit lower on the passive attack speed at the start that will scale up based on level starting at 50% instead of 60. So not the biggest changes and still a very strong champion here. And for Broken Blade, uh, a bit of an unsung hero right now for G2 at this tournament, basically saving their first game versus Loud. Even Absolutely. Though they probably would have won that series no matter what based off game two. Maybe could have dropped in game one if not for him. So. Uh, now again, getting that kind of counter pick. Obviously, the early cannon as well for him in the previous game, showcasing that he is a very big threat. Yeah, Ragnarok can also dis disrupt so much of the hard CC that PSG have put together. If he can get ahead in this game, it will simplify a lot of G2's game plan. But here we are, a spot in the bracket stage on the line. G2 at match point. One more win will secure it for them. PSG, can they fire back here in game two? The question on everyone's mind. Rough and tumble game one, game two. Hoping for the same amount of explosiveness as we get ready, as we dive in. Game two, PSG versus G2. Hoping to see PSG bounce back, make a series of this, make London fans sweat a little bit more. <laughs> we had Golden Guardians do it to BLG earlier. Hopefully PSG can do it here on champions that they're more comfortable with. We obviously spent a lot of time talking about Wako, Aji going to one of the champions I was hoping to see him on, Kasante, one of his most played. Like you talked about, Yubao and Junjia having a lot of pressure in the mid lane. It's a little bit stronger, pre six sometimes too. If you can land the charm setup into Q combo from the. And that was the game where they kind of broke the PSG script. Not that PSG don't win early games, but they, they really dominated DFM from start to finish when they had this mid jungle duo and really did an excellent job of, of snowballing those advantages. Yubao especially, uh, showing up everywhere on the map, finding these picks, finding these angles, really leveraging the RA to the fullest. The reason why the champion has been so high prio. Yes, uh, when you play her poorly or fall behind, she looks useless, but if you get ahead and you can continue to snowball that advantage, she looks incredibly powerful. And very important in the context of PSG, like, yeah, they're not a super proactive team in terms of combined kills per minute, but it is important for them to have pressure on the map and kind of control their opponents, which is what they like to do. RA for Yubao being an option to do that. And for people who don't know, that is Uniboy, who previously has played on international stages before when PSG took him on loan, actually, when they had some issues with their mid laner. He was actually incredible. <laughs> and people thought he was a stronger Earth too. Hold on, Broken, Broken Blade. Blade. Is he just going to 2v1? He's, he just, he's just unconcerned. He flashes in, the axe is down. Aji, Broken Blade does not care. You cannot stop this Viking. Junja, running for his life. What did we just watch? Broken Blade, I was trying to do story time about PSG before we made the whole thing about him. This fight on the bottom side. Glacial Augment now going in. All of this to distract you from the fact that Broken Blade just very casually walked in and solo killed the enemy top laner in front of the enemy jungler. This also opens up a Yike is just walking in? Yeah, Yike now able to go invade off the top side. After Parker getting... Brocked. Does bow there. He needs to finish his kill immediately. Charm in, flash to the side. He can pick up the buy. He can now go in for the Q. Cap oh. only level two. He can't follow up. They can't finish Yubao, but big chunk of damage going down. G2. Oh my god. It, it's topside dominance again. Yes, it's happening in a completely different fashion, but it's exactly like game one. Topside completely in favor of G2. G2 instantly destroyed the top jungle for PSG. The kill immediately onto Ajay, burning his flash, his teleport back in the lane. Yubao as well, losing his flash in that trade. Junjia dying, handing the blue buff over, having you start now on red buff from ground zero, basically. A huge 1,000 gold lead from that invade, started by Broken Blade and capitalized on by Yike.
And this is... Uh, I was going to say just Olaf things, but I've never seen an Olaf do this. Now, I don't play against a lot of Olafs because I, I ban mean, this champion, but... Olaf invading topside by himself is a pretty common strategy, but usually it doesn't go quite this hard, where there's just this complete split focus, where Jinjia just refuses to help Aji out there. He's still hitting the buff at this point in time, so it's basically a 1v1, and Olaf wins almost every melee 1v1 early on in the game. And so oh. even though he hits two off the, the blue smite there, you know, you're still too scared to fight you the Olaf. You know the meme where you're sweating for your life, uh, and your teammates just, like, chilling? You know, like, singing, just having a good time? That feels like the jungler's just like, all right, what's going on? Sorry, is there a problem? Is there an Olaf hitting you? I'm really just trying to finish my blue buff here right now, bro. There's a pause. Um, that's why we're not immediately back in the game. We'll keep you guys updated. Showing as to off what the, the sixth stage. Is. Yeah, I, was, I <laughs> wasn't looking at the screen. I was dancing in front of Mark Z to prove a point. Um, so missed that it one. It was briefly. poorly done. Good thing the camera wasn't on us. <laughs> okay, wow. Um, <laughs> dude, uh, be dirtier than uh, Aji there in that level one. That's not very nice. That, you know how like laners always ping junglers and complain? Like, why aren't you here? Why aren't you helping me? And junglers are always like, oh, these guys are so dumb. I have to do my clear. I have all these things. I have. That is like the most extreme version of that where the jungler's like, no, I have to do my clear. I can't and help. He's literally it. flashing into melee range of you to try. He's like, please pay attention to me. Yeah, like any any vault breaker Q would have helped me there, sir. Uh, just nope. Probably uh, not an option. Give you more yeah. context on the pods as we get it. In the meantime, there's a lot of things that we could talk about in this game. But right now, I'm still just reeling from that Olaf level. I, I huh. I just wonder what they're talking about in the pause. Because you're allowed to talk now, I believe, in pauses, if I'm not I, saying. It might take be. a certain amount of time before you're allowed to talk. Is I, it, is I, it, I, I is won't it a quote with full confidence, because I think international rules, while usually... Ooh, that could be different, too. Yeah, I'm not, I haven't, you know, perused every... We're not lawyered before. up right now. Yeah, but we can maybe see in the cameras. Will we? They're, nope, they're not allowed to talk. Or G2. Oh, maybe G2 are just... Meditating. Serious boys. No, I, don't, I think you're right. No more talking. Thank God, because otherwise there would be some bickering, I bet, right now. Yeah, in, uh, I don't know if that helps. Does side. that help the mental or hurt the mental? Maybe you can talk it out. So, like, rather than flaming your jungler and then resetting, now you're just stewing in it. You're brooding. No, I, I think that, I mean, you think you can spin it either way. I would say you can talk about it and say, hey, looks, look, we had an oopsies, guys, you know? Oops, there was an Olaf in our jungle, but um, we have to recover. The uh, crowd here in London, I think, might be a little bit favored in terms of G2. They did just cheer for Mickey spinning a hand warmer, so... Every time he catches it, they cheer again. Oh, he fumbled it. It wasn't on camera. You guys missed it. Oh, the maybe maybe we can get a replay on the player cam. I don't know <laughs> if that's too much to ask of production on, on the fly like that, but uh, he's, go he's going again. Oh, it looks like there's a man under the desk. <laughs> he is triaging the situation. They might be swapping a PC again. Don't worry. Mickey's doing his best to keep the house entertained in person, spinning the, uh, the hand warmers. A man of many talents, Mickey. Yeah. Can play Pike, can play Lulu, can play. <laughs> can spin a hand warmer. Where were you going with this? I was just saying. He plays piano. Does he? I don't know. Mortal Kombat. What, what, are the, what, are the, what are the secrets of Mickey? Um, he plays anime. He plays a lot of anime Wait, you stuff you on play piano. play Magic, right? Weren't you? Guys yeah, we, we, we do play a lot of Magic. Yeah. Not so much anymore. He's been focused. When you get first seed, you get to play more magic with your friends. But when you get second seed, you don't get a lot of free time. <laughs> the, the whip comes yeah, out. The whip. <laughs> Coach comes out with the belt, and things uh, things change very quickly. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll get to play a little bit after this because the winner does move on to, to the bracket stage. stage. Yep. And I think that's a huge advantage, uh, not only because you don't have to play a best of five and sweat for your life, although the pause appears to be resuming. Make sure we get ready checks and everyone's good to go before we get back into game. Uh, there's a monitor issue, which was resolved. And we're now back in the game. Oh, that's why Junjia couldn't help Aji. His monitor His was turned monitor off. His monitor was off. Oh, oh classic come on, come mistake, on. guys. Everyone's been there. Whoops. You know. Sorry, Cassante. <laughs> ah, well, we'll get him next time. Yeah. Okay, so the good news is, while this is frustrating, I'd still on G2 to snowball their advantage, and we could take a look back at this play. So this was the second kill that happened to Junji. Uh, yep, yep, so yep. after the Olaf got the kill, Yike goes instantly for the invade. Doesn't have red buff. Actually started on uh, Raptors, of course. So Junji thinking that he should be stronger, able to win this one out. But Yike just a better 1v1 champ at this point in the game. Nice flash on the charm. Then they have the soul to re-grab. No time to talk about it. We're diving bot. Here we go. Level 3 dive on the bot side. Green blue. What else can get done here? Green red, rather. As Waco gets burned down, that's going to be a reset for Yike if he wants to take it. The TV now coming in. What are you going to take? A big chunk of damage there from the Frozen Thrall. He's taking G2. Wave coming in. They can oh, go for the re-dive. Auto attack. They're trying to cancel the recall there. Yike desperately trying to clear the wave. Cutting that one off. Woody canceling the recall. Yubao here. They need to get something back. 
G2 setting up, should be an easy dive, should be an easy leap back out to safety. That's gonna be one reset. Yike can now take the Leona, he can now turn his attention back onto Yubao, but he's isolated under the tower for now. Taking his time, walking up, just gets to push Q, finds the stun, sets it up. Yike still living, G2, flawless tower dive. Wako should be able to walk back here and get a kill, but Yike, clean sidestep. Q flashing forward, will be able to get it. G2, cleaner than your church shoes. Is that still a meme we use? God, that was a good dive. Able to find three kills in the bot lane there. Up to five now. Waka with a, you know, pity cleanup kill onto Yike. Well, oh the first two kills were concerning, but the first five kills are a big problem now. Uh, PSG, if you want the copium angle, was able to come back in the previous game after a pretty disastrous early game. Much better uh, scaling AD carry on the bottom side of the map. Good engage tools as we get closer to level six, but certainly a pretty large deficit. That's an entire Caulfield that uh, Yike is just chilling with. We'll see what Vi is able to grab in the meantime. A Kindle gem, so not too far behind individually. Hans does have uh, boots and a noon quiver. Yeah, a little bit ahead. So going to be something where PSG can uh, have to stabilize because you can expect a lot more roams coming in from G2. I expect them to keep actually attacking this Ooh, but double side. buff. They could actually... Hans has cleanse. I don't know if the angle is there, but definitely have the guns for setup if they want to try to force a trade here. Maybe try. You do have Junjia on the bot side, so maybe going to make a play happen, but does feel scary with the uh, Leona versus Lulu Jinx. Going to wait out these double buffs, I think, on the side of G2. It will be temporarily low pressure, but later on, you can keep making dives happen in the bot side with the Viego Lissandra if you can break out a mid lane, which is obviously something they're able to do with how far ahead they are across the board already. 1.5k gold lead. You know. Walk on Woody getting pressure for now. I don't think it'll result in much other than a convenient recall timing. Not really an angle to go into the mid lane quite yet. Jinja now roaming up as Yubao unfortunately lost a little bit of that prio in the early lane phase. Quick boots too for Lissandra means it's so much easier to mitigate the harass. Sidestep those abilities. But Yike now walking forward here. Control War just to spot him out to make sure they can secure this crab. PSG using the bot prio they secured. Give that crab over to Jinja. Yeah, I think they were maybe considering a Dragon Star as we see with Mickey getting a little close range. Walking up CC there, Traps now coming in. Yike walking over the wall, but they've kind of also started the Dragon for some reason. A bit of a split call here, but now they're looking for the re-engage. Walko, excellent guns to get this fight kicked off. That's two, locked up the Flamethrower, continuing to fire back. Yike now running for his life, and that's a kill for PSG. Slow on to Mickey, no follow up there. Caps off to the side, almost taken out, but he will walk away with his life. Yubao putting pressure on the Caps, making sure he could not join that fight and land a big frozen tomb. So isolating the mid laners out, allowed the side of PSG to chase down in that situation. A nice little answer there, clawing the gold lead a little bit closer, getting a dragon in their back pocket as well. Did cost you Bao's ultimate, so not going to be able to make any plays around there. But overall, you got to be pretty happy with that usage of the double buffs. I thought G2 would kind of just sack that bot prio for a little bit, yep. but uh, maybe thinking because they're so far ahead that they can win any fight they take, but not the case right now. And while Hansama is strong, Noon Quiver isn't the most uh, oppressive item in lane, and certainly when it comes to Rob, just a hard engage. Hard engage 2v2. Uh, Athelios Leona, a very strong duo in terms of what they can bring to the table. So, you know, yes, it was earlier on a bit of an item deficit, but not hurting too much. And of course, now that Athelios has grabbed some kills of his own, he should be able to go back with some more items under his belt. Even things out, at least on the bottom side of the map. So at the end of the day, still a 1,000 gold lead, but not to the end of the world right now. Summoners are also close to coming back available for Waco and the rest of PSG. Six is coming in. This is when a, a lot of the playmaking for both teams becomes unlocked. And we'll see if G2 can keep making map movements happen, because that was kind of the way that they won the early game. Waco stepping up. Good guns for a fight. Chakram's now coming out. Auto attacks coming through fast on the Hansama. Easy shutdown now coming in. Waco finding one. Mickey now trying to trade back on a kill. Hell pick's Ooh. not going to be enough. Waco too clean with it. Oh, oh the double. turret! Such a nice setup there. You saw Woody walk away knowing the turret was going to finish that one off. A 2v2 double kill for the side of PSG. Waco up to four kills now. Suddenly this game is looking a little dicey on his signature champion. Gold now dead even, but it's the Drake in favor of PSG. And of course, Aji on the, on the top side might be in trouble. He did burn all out previously onto Broken Blade. Broken Blade still holding on to his ultimate. G2, instead of trying to pressure or threaten to dive here against the Cassante, don't want to risk it. We'll focus on the Herald. Mickey first there as well. So should be the Herald at the end of the day traded. But every time I feel like G2, like I thought 5-1 at the start of a game like this would be a big lead. Credit to PSG, it never is as big as I think it is. They always find an angle. It's, yeah. 
there's, there's two sides to the coin, of course. There's uh, PSG finding an absolutely great engage in the bot side by Woody to find that kill. Yubao? Yubao. Yubao can just alt out to safety, trying to body block now. Yike coming in. Yubao is going to get taken down. That's big. Jinxal now coming in over the wall. Yike can't dash for it, but can get a bit of extra movement speed. Going to fish for the charm. Won't quite connect. They are able to walk away. Might mean conceding red buff, but they have to be careful. Wako is 4-1. Wako is incredibly strong. They cannot afford to take a fight. Forcing out Mickey's flash. He knows if he gets locked down there, he will surely fall. Yeah, level 6 disadvantage there by Mickey. The fact that they lost that 2v2 man. Woody had that to kind of force out that engage. Get the flash. Force you 2 out of the jungle as well. So PSG, after a bit of a face check there by Yubao, felt like they were a little lax on the reset. After that great fight in the bot lane, the other team's going to take the, the Rift Herald. Great, and then they'll reset. But G2 actually just ran across mid lane. Caught him out there. Found that kill. Bit of a mistake, but still in an okay position. I was going to say that it seems like G2 and EMAA fans love sweating, being nervous. I don't know if they love it, but it certainly seems like a reality as to what is happening as Caps gets locked up and knocked out in the mid lane. Three members showing up strong there. PSG finding another kill. 11 kills before 11 minutes in the game. This is a pace. This is definitely not the traditional PSG, but showing that they can hang with the faster pace G2 trading kills all over the map. Oh, now, Mickey. roaming into the bot side, trying to force a dive on the stack wave by Wako. Wako coming in. G2 holding on for now. They've got Yike in the area. They still haven't used the Herald. Keep in mind, that should further push their gold ahead, even if they are giving up plate in the mid lane. Take a look at these gold advantages. A 1,000 gold loot for Wako already. For the side of G2, a lot of it is actually on Broken Blade after that initial great start, having a small CS lead and stuff. So he's almost uh, 600 gold himself up. And important to keep track of, especially if Broken Blade is not in the fight. And a lot of these times, these gold leads can be a little bit deceiving in terms of how, what do they mean? You know, if you don't have the items, if you haven't purchased, if you haven't spent the gold, it means nothing. And if that character's not in the fight, it means nothing as well. So G2's individual advantage for Broken Blade. Only mattering right now in the context of the top side of the map. And not the most damning uh, lead either. For the most part, Daji is very good at playing weak side. It's one of the things that he has done so well for the team is he absorbs pressure like this. And then in team fights, he's actually an incredible team fighter. And a lot of those late game fights that do go PSG's way, in other situations in their, their regional gauntlet uh, tournament yeah. run, they were able to find a lot of team fights on Nar and stuff like this off his back of engaging. So I think for Aji, this is actually kind of his comfort zone. Like, okay, first blood, yeah, level okay, one, yeah. on invade, not what I want to happen. But yes, from but here... But he's comfortable playing weak side of the map. Maybe yes. not comfortable having an Olaf walk in at level one and solo kill him. Certainly, yeah. I don't think anyone is, but is okay playing at a deficit. And we'll track to see what he can get done as we get later and later in the game. For now, G2 setting up control on the top side of the map. And again, we heard it uh, in the interview with Horizon with Ashley Kang. I believe before the tournament started, Mickey talking a little bit about how G2 can get lost in the mid game, can lose sight of what they need to be doing. But right now, it seems like eyes on the prize. The prize right now is Ozzy. The top side, unstoppable. Traps now coming out. He's flashing to safety. G2 setting up pressure there. It looks like just trying to break this Jinx out of the laning phase, willing to concede the bot side of the map to just try to rush down this tower. Nicely done there by Ozzy to get the flash out before the uh, traps arm themselves. And I like this play by G2. I think oh, a Broken Blade under turret will be a little bit harder to dive with his ultimate able to immune a lot of the CC from the Leona. They might still look for it, otherwise just grab turret plates and continue the dragon stacking. Just down on the backside. G now unstoppable, dashing forward, looking for the Q3 pullback, but polymorphed. Not sure we can really alt to get out to safety. Not really a lot of angles to escape on this one. Aji standing for now, but that's the reset now coming in for Yike. Caps following up, ulti used already. G2 just going to try to break through top lane tower. The Herald grabbing a bit of damage, grabbing a few plates, but G2 going to need a lot more damage if they want to shred through on this wave. I'm going to take the second one at least. A nice idea by PSG there, rotating you bow up to try and cover the dive, but just too clean by the side of G2. Now it's PSG's now turn. It's PSG's turn indeed, but Broken Blade is very, very strong, trying to turn and burn. Waka will at least grab the kill. Now one more on the top side of the map as you bow gets taken down. Mickey X still standing, and G2 just doing it better on the top side of the map. Able to get two kills on their dives, also a one-for-one one by Broken Blade while breaking that top turret. The Dragon does go in PSG's favor, but overall you have to be happy for that as a G2 fan. Waka will have to stick around to finish this turret off. He will grab it, but it will give G2 the faster reset as well to get back onto the map. So able to trade up quite a bit in kills there and grab themselves back that 1,000 gold lead. And see really where they want to focus in the next few minutes. Of course, a minute and 12 seconds until the second Herald is going to spawn. So something that we're going to have to keep track of. G2 will really reset back to the top side of the map. Now that they've broken open that tower, are they willing to concede second Herald and instead continue to try to pump money into the Jinx? I actually like the strategy generally. 
It's a champion who excels at destroying towers. Yes, plates are now down, but Hansama can shred these objectives if left unattended. It's similar for Aphelios with White Gun if he's if he's close enough. I would consider for PSG contesting this dragon. You have all your sums available on Wako. He is quite Whoosh. strong. 1,500 gold up of his opposition. Well, well timed. Uh, MasterCard gold difference. Showing us uh, the story of this game. So it's all eyes on Wako. If we're going to see a fight, if we're going to see a skirmish, uh, it's the Aphelios. He's got to do all the work. Absolutely. And the fact that I was just saying he has his sums available, ultimate's going to be coming up for pretty much everyone makes it feel like you're pretty happy to fight around him. Red and white guns grabbed up. Red on pretty low ammo, but still a very threatening situation if G2 were trying to dive into him, being able to kite back with the rest of his team. Yeah, and I talk a lot about Aphelios because this is the only champion you can be good at by reading. Um, <laughs> The and bane of pro players everywhere. The bane of pro players everywhere. They don't always read the finer details. But the TLDR, if you're not very familiar with this champion or you struggle to follow, is you don't want to walk into a fight with uh, with a purple gun at full ammo. It's just not a gun you can get rid of easily. It's not a gun that does a lot. Has some very good use cases. But to check in on the win expectancy powered by AWS, but very close. Not like last game where G2 were nearly at 99.9%. .9%. No. It's been back and forth. A lot more heart rate monitor look here. PSG grabbing mid pressure off the Herald setup here. We'll see if they want to fight or just trade out for the turret. Have to be careful with G2 approaching the wave to try and defend. Looking for the engage. Wako still untouched on the backside for now. Broken Blade continuing to wander forward. You can see big damage coming in from the Aphelios off to the side. His Calibre Q is going to be matched, but they're just trying to shred through the jungler. They get the reset, and that might be enough. Leaping in. Ari not able to find the charm in that one. Yubao not even going to throw it out. PSG getting corralled here by G2 Esports. Wako has to be careful. Caps once again going to fish for an angle onto the backside. Wako now gale forcing out to safety. If Wako has no space to play, he's got no room to maneuver. Now he's trying to fire back. He just can't do any damage. G2 tearing through his front line too quickly. Yes, he's powerful, but he's got no space to work. Excellent slow play engage there by G2, poking in and out multiple times, trying to find the weak point of PSG's line, and they found it in Junjia, trying to heal up off the honey fruit plant. Gets engaged on, gives the first reset for Yike, and then to wrap around the turret for the redive. Very clean play by G2 there, and defended their mid lane turret while grabbing the Rift Herald there for more gold. Just a huge cleanup by G2. Yeah, now it about a 3k gold advantage, looking strong overall, and you can see it starts by just chunking out the enemy jungler. I love how they're playing this. They're just trying to stop them from being able to get in, get the Rift Herald, and then here, I thought they were just going to be blowing alts and engage tools to kind of force them back to make sure they don't lose this mid lane turret. That's why Broken Blade, you know, charging forward there. I think this is all clean. But then once they see Jinjia step too far forward, that's when they just flash commit everything on top of him. Hansama ultimate didn't even connect, wasn't even needed, but the right idea. And then you can now move around the backside and actually find this engage angle. It's a, maybe a scary situation with this Charmlands, but baits out so many of the engage tools that means there's nothing to stop Caps from going flying into the backside of the fight yeah. and finding all these kills. And Wako forced to go for early, and, and credit to G2 identifying the second that the Ari Spirit Rush was no longer available, the, the potential for PSG to turn without the Vi, without the Ari Ultimate, is, is essentially non existent. Oh boy. Here we go. Like now walking in, all eyes on Wako. They're just trying to bully this man out of the mid lane. He will flash over the wall to safety, but safety might not be the right word. Woody instead will be the sacrificial Leona here. PSG now retreating in the mid lane. They're getting absolutely slaughtered. G2 dissecting them in the mid lane, not giving their AD carry a single opportunity to do anything in the last two fights. G2 continue attacking from multiple angles at the same time. You could see Junjia charging his Q up, not quite sure who to actually use it on to defend and it allowed Broken Blade to charge down onto Wako, saving Private Wako. Did succeed, but it cost the rest of the team their lives. And with that, G2 are also able to move back onto the Dragon on the tail end of that fight that they win. Stop the Drake stacking from PSG, stop that potential win con, and continue to grow the gold lead up to 5,000 now. And it's a concerning sign in the fights to come for PSG because Wako is still very strong. 6-1-0. He just finished the Infinity Edge. He should be able to shred through a fight, but with this Olaf just running at him, with the looming threat of Caps coming over a wall, it's very hard for him to find space to maneuver. And there is no Thresh. There, there is no uh, Tom Kent. There are no safety tools for the Cephelios. Past the Cleanse, past the Gale Force, and I just don't know if he's going to have the opportunity to, to really play out these fights. Yeah, it does make you wonder, like, Okay, the IE is obviously going to be needed to punch through very tanky members of G2 already. The uh, steel plate, steel cap's done for, for Broken Blade, has the Aegis as well. You see an all-in here. He's just going to walk him down. That is an unstoppable Kazante. Broken Blade maybe hoping that Aji would respect the challenge to a 1v1. He was not interested. He just wanted to walk away, so alt not going to be 
super impactful in that context. Yeah, Ash is still on the Walmart build, just has a little bit of everything. Yep. Trying to get to his Mythic still not feeling particularly strong, so I can understand not wanting the 1v1 against yep. Broken Blade. Yeah, you, you, you can't, the everyday low prices can't battle the like Supreme, <laughs> Gucci, whatever the hell Broken Blade's got going on with two completed items, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely not a fight you want to take. And uh, for, for uh, Waka, where I was going, was it not going for the, the Bloodthirster second. Obviously with the nerf that kind of came in for that item recently, not as much of a second item rush, but maybe Certainly. with how much engaged tools there are by G2, they kind of force him out of fights if they can just chunk him low with Broken Blade charging in there. And it's really tricky when you are the Fed member of your team can you afford to build defensively? Can you afford to delay item and damage spikes? Because now we see the last Whisper coming in, and we're probably not going to see a Bloodthirster until fourth item, and he really needs that lifesteal. He needs that sustain. He needs that shield. Uh, so it's going to be tricky. Again, more pressure on Wako to move flawlessly in these fights and to get his teammates to, to cover from as much as possible because G2 clearly aware of how much of an advantage that they have. 6K just about in their favor. A little closer to 5. But G2 taking control of the pit for now, looking for an angle into these fights. Yep, working the vision of PSG, trying to force them in, trying to find an angle to peel them apart. Already objective bounties up for PSG if they're able to trade out for the mid lane turret, but G2 very good about making sure that they keep the wave cryo on the enemy side of the map. G2, and especially Broken Blade, just continuing to walk forward. Just walking menacingly at the side of PSG. I'm very impressed by him. He has done a very good job this tournament so far. Whoa. Five, one, and two now on the Olaf. It's been fantastic for him. And domestically, he was trying a lot of creative strategies. They weren't always working out. He was falling behind in lanes to players like Adam. So a lot of people were skeptical as to how good Broken Blade was. But we can see here on the international stage, at least in this first stage, he's really showing up. Yeah, I remember just seeing so much hate. I was told that EU top sucked, but it does not seem to be the case. So far with Broken Blade this tournament, you know, I, I heard that like, oh, Photon's the best, or Chasey's the best, and, and here he is, absolutely having a great tournament so far. Now Baron Buff started out by G2. G2 focus, Broken Blade immediately going to try to turn Waka running for his life. They have to burn through that Olaf, but they just don't have the damage. They're trying, but they cannot get it done. Mickey delivered into the waiting arms of PSG, but it just sets up for Caps. It's a Wombo combo, and Broken Blade just continues to run face first into the back line of PSG. He will not be stopped. He will not be slowed. He'll be charmed, but he will not go down. Oh, he's just, oh, he's just having a time of his life. He just does not care. Take notes, baby. He's making it work. Broken Blade heard us talking about him, said, keep the camera on me. Force that engage. Huge team fight win by G2. Caps keeping Junji around, waiting for backups. There's the kill. Four for his one on the side of G2, and we'll grab the Baron on the back end of that fight. That was not a fight for PSG, and we are quickly starting to realize how strong uh, Whimsy Shirelia's wild growth to Olaf is in the context of trying to take out a single fed enemy. Wako, even with the Gale Force, admittedly with no flash, uh, he just couldn't do it. He couldn't burn through the Olaf health bar fast enough, but he couldn't run fast enough to get away from the Viking. So, next few minutes are going to be tough. Maybe he gets three, four items. It's a different story, but G2 leveraging their strength incredibly well. Not too much to break down here. Like you said, press all the buttons, run at the enemy, press Q, W, E, and just melt him down. Broken Blade knows how strong he is, has the Radiant Virtue build as well to keep himself kind of healing up through the fight. And then, while the rest of the team was kind of trying to save Wako, they funneled into that choke point there and gave Caps a monstrous engage over the wall, locking down multiple members, blowing them up. G2 grabbed the Baron, look well positioned to 2-0 this series. If they can close this one out, they're going to be moving on to the main stage of MSI. Huge to lock it in here. Reminder, if you, if you lose, you have to play uh, you know, a best of three against the winners of tomorrow's loser side bracket match, then that's just to qualify for a best of five. So it's a long road for anyone who does not able to find a win here. G2 currently in control is Woody being isolated. He throws down the ultimate, but it's just not going to do anything. Yike turning into Leona. See if he tries to go for the re-engage, but G2 again focused on the objective in front of them, ready to turn this fight if necessary. Wako, great guns for a fight. But again, will he get the time and space to do anything? Broken Blade just eyeing him out, keeping an eye on that Ophelia so consistently. Yike. Follow up, good damage on Aji. PSG just backing away. It's not really an angle here. I think they just have to concede the inhibitor. Be careful not to just lose the entire game in this moment. Yeah, it's just such a menace. Broken Blade is able to force out so many summoners. Gets the bot lane inhibitor for the rest of his team. Also, Hansama quietly having a good game here. Flank engage coming in. Jump backside. Ulti available. 
He says the blast going out to safety. Trying to fish Pontama. Pontama lines up against the wall. He can maybe try to get something up. Oh. Pulls it back to the waiting arms. Waco can now go to town. Broken Blade on the backside is big though. Can they burn through Broken Blade? Broken Blade. Ultimate in three seconds. He's gonna shred through the devil as soon as he can, but his health bar's already blinking. You bet now leaping forward. He sees you immune, but will it be enough? Broken Blade still standing. Broken Blade still cutting through the entire team. Waco gets turned into a little snowman. He can't even auto when G2 taking the fight. For a moment there, PSG thought they had the flank angle. They found Han Sama, but that left Broken Blade alive to chase down. And with that kill, G2 are going to punch their ticket on. Game one, back and forth. But game two has just been about the G2 show from start to finish. PSG, small glimmers of hope, but they're going to have to hope for more than that on the bottom side of the bracket. G2 taking their time on the win, taking their time on the closeout as Waco finds one kill. Waco. Still autoing. Yikes should just end the game, but they Whoa. can't end the game. Waco is too strong. Waco work for it. continuing to go hard. Oh my god. Call him Waco Flocko Flame. He's going hard in the paint. Waco. Oh, he holds on. That's a shutdown. What? Oh my god. Somehow this man refuses to lose. You can see him laughing on the screen, finding the kill onto Mickey while the rest of the team was thinking they could just end the game. Not the case there. Gets the cleanup kill onto Yike. Now they're going to grab a dragon. PSG, no Nexus turrets left alive, but refusing to let the game end. And I... I they are the, the I didn't hear no bell team. <laughs> like, if, if, face if, bruised. If, if face bruised, standing up, you know. Knees wobbling. Not even in the right, maybe arguably not in the right weight class. They're still going, you know. They will not stop. PSG, and Waco especially, well played. Of course, you can see in the fight, G2. Still coming out on top, despite what looked like a promising start for PSG. Yeah, the fact they used pretty much every ultimate that they had on Han Sama to finish him off. Broken Blade, like you said, counting down the time until he had his ultimate back available, able to drop that one and become so hard to kill with all that life steal coming through. The Ravenous Hydra doing tons of work. They get the kills there, and then Waco somehow baits the rest of G2 into thinking that they can just ignore him, which 4v1, I get why you think you can. But here, just so much spray damage done from the blue gun, the flash forward onto Mickey, and then being able to poke caps and multiple members of G2 low through the minion wave leaves Yike a little exposed for the purple gun slow chase down sequence. You were talking about how usually you don't want the blue or uh, purple gun, but in that yeah, sequence. Because the slow usually isn't that valuable, but when you can just walk down an enemy team, it's looking like a pretty damn good gun. PSG. Cap's now going to leap forward, instantly trying to lock down the 80 carry, and they should just shred through Waco, and that's oh just the God. game. They're just slaughtering everybody. They don't have any damage left. G2, they're not playing around. That one's going to be it. Ubao taken out. He's running back to the base, but there's just no way he gets out. Hansama will snipe him with the zap. G2, 2 owing PSG, qualifying to the bracket stage. PSG not out of the tournament yet. They'll get an opportunity to come back, but today is G2's day. Have yet to drop a game here. MSI. 4-0 so far in their two series. Say cute base defense. Time to end this one with no turrets to fall back to. Very easy engage for Broken Blade and the rest of the team. I mean, I you know what? Honestly, like, well played the G2. Consistently finding the angles. Broken Blade, again, I think a man who deserves so much praise and recognition, especially in light of, as you highlighted, uh, you know, not being everybody's favorite G2 player after some maybe questionable performances domestically, really popping off internationally. But PSG, keeping it interesting. Every time I think they're out, they find a way back in. But today, again, is G2's day, well played. And now we'll get to see how they match up against the top seeds in the major regions. And of course, against uh, their fellow teams who will make their way out of this bracket. Definitely the case. Obviously, a lot of that time was spent talking about Broken Blade ending at 10 and 1 and 9 in crazy level 1, but have to give some shout outs to the rest of the team too. The mid jungle combination of yep. Yike and Caps is looking absolutely on point, uh, punishing these kinds of mistakes that get made up. And then the bot lane for Han Samba, I was saying quietly good performance, ended 8, 2, and 13, finding a lot of kills on the Jinx. Yeah, and I think really. Ultimately, it's crazy to think now, after a few days of games, we've locked two of the three slots from this first stage into the second stage. There is one slot remaining. It will require you to win that best of five. Uh, and this is a ton of pressure on the remaining teams. Everybody wanted to be in the position that uh, BLG and G2 find themselves in now. This is the simplest path out of this portion of the tournament, and now it is so hard for the remaining teams. Have to fight for your life from now on. Every series is do or die for the remaining teams of the play-in stage. We'll be back tomorrow to see those best of threes like you were talking about. But I gotta say, for, for G2, you're feeling pretty good. I think a lot of teams were wondering exactly how good G2 would be. They have this long history of 
great international performances. It feels like a lot of people recently have been kind of counting out uh, G2, that it yeah. wasn't exactly the same aura and mystique that they had in the Perks Caps combo years with Yankos. And it, it's a very, very different team than those times, but showing that they still have it, they are incredible players and uh, a team to be feared moving forward that they have so many threats, so many different ways to approach the game, very flexible drafts. Yeah. I think a huge strength, especially on, uh, you know, after seeing two patches where we didn't see a ton of change come through, where we didn't see a lot of shifts in the meta overall, G2 still continuing to innovate, finding picks like the Nautilus, see what else they can bring as we get deeper into the tournament. And as other teams enter the tournament, a lot of teams we haven't seen yet, a lot of teams not even on the ground in London yet, getting ready to play, getting ready to show us their read on this particular meta, on this particular tournament. It does tend to change quite a bit between play-ins and the end of the tournament. Things that you thought were OP just hadn't had their counters figured out yet or were just abusing teams that couldn't deal with it. This Nautilus mid was something that was banned out here, forcing G2 onto their second level strategies, you could say. Yeah. The Kazakhs coming out, the Nidalee was something that we had seen before. So a lot of different champions that are starting to get the attention of everyone watching at home, waiting to show up for the main stage. Certainly the case. Now I'm guessing, it looks like, I think production, we're not quite ready but you can see there are two very, very talented people standing on the stage. We are moments away from talking to them. And the crowd ready, the crowd feeling alive. So let's send it over to the stage where Yinsu is standing by with Caps for the Verizon post-game interview. Thank you very much, guys. That's right, I'm joined by Caps right now uh, from G2. Congratulations, of course, you'll Thank remember you. last year, PSG talent wasn't the best for you guys. I think they even ended your 24 uh, winning game streak. I know the team is different today, but how great is it to kind of get your revenge? I mean, it feels good. It feels good for sure. Uh, they they kind of started a lot of losses for us last year, so yeah, beating them now, making it to the main stage, feels good. Yeah, you've made it. Also, I'm not sure if you're aware, uh, but you've today finally secured your 500th international kill. <laughs> now, my question is, did you expect? that you'll be doing that on Gragas? <laughs> um, <laughs> probably not, especially looking at a lot of the games right now. I think the, like, I feel like I'm not getting that many kills. Uh, so I, I'm happy that I, I got picked up a lot of them on Gragas. <laughs> uh, but why Gragas today? We've never really seen you play that champion before. I mean, Niski beat us with it, right? So I just uh, picked it up, uh, played it. I've always liked Gragas a lot. I uh, played a lot of Gragas in the past, and now it actually feels pretty strong, so. <laughs> I mean, you're kind of playing a lot of things you haven't played before, the Nautilus <laughs> as well. Is this a personal decision or a team decision? Uh, I mean, I think it's a bit of both, right? I think we just try to play what we think is best and what will help us win, and like what is the meta as well. Uh, and I think right now this is what we've come up with. Maybe we have a few surprises ready for the, the main stage, <laughs> but uh, I, I won't say anything. <laughs> you always do. You always have surprises. Um, I want to say, though, in terms of the 500th kill, only three other players have more than you internationally. That is uh, Xiaohu, uh, Faker, and your former teammate, Perks. Now, you're 23 away from beating him. Uh, do you think you're going to be able to do that in this tournament and overtake him in kills? Uh, I, I mean, definitely hope so, because we definitely want to go all the way, and uh, if I think we have to play, like, what, three or four bu fives? So if I, if I get less uh, than 20 kills on that, then that would be, be pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of opportunities. You have a lot of opportunities. Uh, lastly, uh, you have secured your guys' uh, spot into the bracket stage. I know you always look forward to playing everybody. You're not really scared of anybody. Uh, but is there anybody that you would like to face in round one? Uh, I mean, just because you said that, maybe I would like to play against T1. Uh, if we can... <laughs> If we can knock down Faker, maybe I can uh, overtake him with the kills. <laughs> oh, well, he's, he's 200 ahead of you right now. You think you could do that one? Uh, that's a bit of a challenge, but <laughs> we need to do it one international tournament at a time, right? <laughs> oh, okay, you got to start somewhere. Uh, thank you so much, Kaz, for joining me. Congratulations thank once you. again. I'm going to throw this over back to thank Trevor for MSI Cooldown. Thank you so much, Yin Su, and congratulations to G2 for locking in that bracket stage. We will wrap up today's show and talk about what's going to happen over the next few days in just a moment. Myself, Dagda, as well as Raz, will break down the series as well as talk about the ramifications and how that third and final play-ins team will be able to advance to bracket stage. Before we do, though, I do want to take this moment to ask for some help. So, as 
I, you know, if you're watching and you're still listening, the MSI format has changed for 2023. So what I would like to do is just remind everybody watching, and in particular, I would love to ask any of our dedicated, hardcore, social media and Reddit obsessed fans to spread the word. There's still a lot of people out there that don't know the double Elam format, that don't know that it's 13 teams. So you can take a look at the link below. I didn't actually notice if it was put up. We've got a YouTube explainer that details all all of the information, or if you haven't checked it out, go to youtube.com slash lol esports. Now, let's take a look quickly at both of the groups, and I'll walk you through this right now. Group A has featured the four teams on screen. Two teams are eliminated once they lose two games. This is the best of three double elimination bracket. You can see BLG, they won 2-0 against R7, they won 2-0 against Golden Guardians, and that means they advance to bracket. Two teams that are on the bottom have to run the lower bracket. The same is true for G2 Esports, who picked up those wins today as well as yesterday. Now, this does mean that we have four teams remaining and only one spot. So over the next three days, we'll begin to narrow those numbers down. Tomorrow, the teams that lose are eliminated. The teams that win advance to another set of best of threes. And the two teams that win there will then play in a final best of five to advance to brackets as the third and final play-in seed. I'm going to show you what that bracket looks like right now, and I'll let Caps know that there will be a minimum of two best of threes. It's going to be that double elimination bracket. You'll see that on your screen right now, and we'll be able to figure that out and do the group draw once we conclude play-ins. So that is going to be the format. I do want to just remind everybody, please, please, please help spread the word. Let everybody know exactly the things that are new and different and changed. And now let's dive back into some of the games we saw today. PSG versus G2. Immediate thoughts other than throw, throw, throw. I mean, that's a lot of it, right? You gotta yeah. look at it and say, I think there was a little bit from G2 where we got to see at least the early game was going their way. We can still see them trying to play through a lot of these dives, but it was kind of the mid game where they started to uh, fumble a little bit. Yeah, that may be the case. I still wanna focus on the fact that in their last game, those dives were clean. I actually felt like even though the fumbling did happen, oh yeah, the series as a whole. I, yeah, they made them cleaner. Uh, I will put that as an, a caveat. But it's good challenge. I mean, the fact that they're able to get onto the next stage and really challenge themselves to look back on a lot of the dive attempts that they've made and realize they've really grown throughout the series, it's a positive. One of the things we did notice about today's series is, especially when reflecting on their debut or their first games, yeah. it played up fairly similarly. Both PSG and G2 fairly scrappy, a little bit less, um, let's say, consistent or coordinated. Yeah. And in particular, G2's two series had the same things. Game one, very close, very tense, some mistakes that led to tense moments, and then a pretty dominant win in the second. Yeah, they never eased off the engine, and that hurt them sometimes, where they were like, oh, maybe some teams would play it slower and, and try and play it by the book. No, they were like, okay, let's go for Baron. <laughs> and sometimes, like, okay, we, we kind of got hurt by that. And then the next game is like, do we learn from that and play it slower? No, let's play that better and play it faster. And it really worked out well for the bot lane dives, the top lane dive that they had in game two. So I'm excited to see how they go into the next stage, kind of zeroing in on this strategy. Yeah, I think a lot of it's felt like the, it seemed to me like G2 were playing with a lot of pressure under them as if they were like, hey, we have to very quickly end this game. We have to go into play for the Baron, where I don't think they really needed to. I think they could have played it, especially in game one, a hell of a lot slower. Yeah. And then it, you could see it in game two that they were considering, how do we want to take these fights a little bit better, right? And I think a huge portion of that was, okay, let's play it slow. Let's try and figure out how we can actually set up skirmishes. Because Broken Blade has this massive lead. We have this Viego. If we can actually separate these fights into two or three people, that's going to work a lot better. And they would look for picks onto the mid laner as he was starting to roam out. We even saw Broken Blade where he was setting around vision in that just the back of red and making sure that he could then be the forefront as well to find these quick picks, these quick fights that didn't really let PSG talent set up for their team. The fights. thing is, Dak, it's a bit of a double-edged sword though because I do respect and appreciate the proactiveness, the, uh, the willingness to go in to make the play. It doesn't always work though. It does get punished sometimes, right? So those are the things that I'm a little bit anxious about when I do think about G2 in the bracket stage. Mm. I want to move us on and talk about the player of the series. And this was a slightly contentious one. There was a number of potential options, but also there was some challenging decisions to be made. Eventually we landed on Broken Blade Raz. Why do we pick him? We picked Broken Blade because of how much of a playmaker he was in the cannon. And then you go into game two, and he was the reason why they had such a huge lead in uh, off his Olaf play, not just in this level one where he's able to pick up a kill. And then when they tried to dive him on the opposite side of the map, he was able to get a, a trade. And then in the later team fights after Baron, he was the reason why he dove on to the Aphelios and killed him. Like, he is huge so far this tournament. I feel like he's the most consistent player for them. And that's the big point for me. I feel like he was the most consistently strong across the course of this. His cannon looked fantastic in game number one, where he's able to get a bunch of these ultimates off. But coming into this as well, the confidence 
to go in 2v1 into the enemy jungle and yeah. go, come at me, I got this. Takes the kill, forces the flash, which then sets up for the extra kill coming in onto the Viego for Yike as well. He was the, the catalyst that they needed this early stage just to get that lead to try and get that snowball off of us. Matt Gala does not end with this man. The question, I, the question <laughs> I have is, is this just exclusive for BB or did the entirety of G2 do the modeling shoot video footage? We'll have to find out a little bit later. But I do think I, I want to just dig into this as well. This man just sees a camera and G2 goes. G2 Esports yeah, have look. locked in that spot in the bracket stage, but there are weaknesses. There are areas of the game that need to be refined and, and cleaned up. And I'm going to be very, very intrigued to see whether or not those same mistakes get punished or whether or not they're able to adapt as we actually get to the late stages of the tournament. It's funny because you mentioned this, Dr. that you know there are times, especially in game one, where they could play a bit slower, but it feels like a year-long thing with them. Like throughout, this is the first time in my lifetime, and I could be wrong, where it's like the LEC was the bloodiest region in the world. And it comes down to an electric strategy for this team to make plays. And it will come with mistakes. Me and you, knowing the LPL, it's like, you'll, <laughs> there'll be a lot of mistakes, but you come up with a lot of rewards. And so you just have to live with those mistakes. I mean, I think you come up with rewards when opponents don't punish it, right? Yeah. We have to find if they do. Let's take a look at the other series before we start to close out the show. BLG taking on the Golden Guardians. A bit of a surprise 2-1 result, I think. But more importantly for me, the games that BLG did win were fairly controlled. Dagda, what do you think of the series as a whole? I, I think this series kind of highlighted a lot of issues that we're actually seeing with BLG, where I think they are a very strong team, but some of the solo laners aren't really linking up correctly. We saw Bin, look, this is a fantastic play here, but honestly, Bin has had a little bit of an underwhelming enter to MSI, I will say. Same with look at Yago. In the later portion of this game, the RE's charms were coming in fantastically, but some of the crucial ones in the early stages weren't quite working. And it feels like a huge amount of BLG's win game at the moment is, can we get Elk ahead? Can on have these pop-off performances? Because if not, I think this could have been a very, very different series. Yes, and something that's consistent as we look to, across the side of Golden Guardians is that you can never count them out. It happened when they went through the playoff run and they were able to pick up a win when it felt impossible. In this case, it was BLG making mistakes, right? Not being disciplined, but they were able to pick up a win there. But it felt like this was the first real challenge to the bot lane that they had, you know, for GAM Esports, Zin and Style actually kind of suffered in domestically. So it's like, okay, they may not be the strongest bot lane. You're going up against Elk now and then they tend to fail there. So I think that's going to be going into the next uh, few series for them to see if they can shore up the early portions of the game because later portions of the game looked great, especially for Licorice. I mean, very surprisingly so, especially in that second game, down, what, 5K, managed to pull it back almost yeah. exclusively because of opportunities that Licorice had created, as well as the engagers from Huhi, of course. Yes. So the results of that, BLG are then locked into the bracket stage along with G2, so both of those pool one seeds are now advancing. We only have one spot left with Golden Guardians losing as well as PSG. They will all be waiting in two days' time to face off against the winners of tomorrow's series. So tomorrow, two more best of threes. Once these teams uh, either conclude if they have their second loss, they're eliminated. If they win, they advance to face the remaining squads. It's going to be really grueling. There's a lot of games ahead. What's your take on how these teams are going to perform tomorrow? I think I'm kind of zeroing in on GAM Esports a little bit because we had a lot of uh, uh, criticisms towards their draft. And we didn't get to see much of them, right? They, get, they just got swept in, in, in a 0-2 fashion. And so it's like, okay, now they watch these games today. Now they have a better idea of what they want to come in right from the get-go. So I'm looking in a, on their draft in particular if they're playing the same style that they had coming into this tournament. I got to look aloud. I think they were absolutely magnificent in their first game against G2. Yep. Very, very close yes. game. And I'm really hoping that we get to see them fight their way back in and see if they can actually make it to the qualifying stage. If you can take down some of the Titans like that are coming from LCS like Golden Guardians, that is going to be such a spectacular story for the CBL. I mean, it's brutal, right? This new format that we have, eight teams come into play ins. Two of them have advanced. Of the remaining six, only one gets to go through. So wow. Two of these squads will be eliminated from MSI 2023 tomorrow. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you, everybody at home. Thank you to the production crew, the events. Thank you to everybody watching. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with two more high stakes do or die elimination matches. Have a good evening and we'll see you then. May the force be with you. With the Riptail going down is stolen again. They're going to go straight away. The hostile taker or a decent shun has taken away the clips onto Bin. They're looking for an engage. Bin with the ultimate of the Aphelios means everybody is turned to dust. PLG will lead the series 1-0. You've got Huhi who has nowhere to be, nowhere to go. One more auto attack and it's going to be out. Oh, <laughs>
No. Stixie doesn't have himself a flash. He's got a thought. Gonna get the root. One more rocket and it's five. <laughs> very, very tanky, but only so much. They're gonna jump straight in now onto Elf, who gets the wild growth on top of him. Liquor is trying to jump in with the all out. Elf flashes away, charmed up, taking it, it down. Holy <laughs> <laughs> guys. <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> Let's go! BLG putting their faith into Elf, the carry that has done so well for them. Yagao takes out Stick Day. BLG, they will join JDG and T1 up. It's the real best of five challenge. Right now in trouble. Flashing out to safety. He desperately needs to get this kill. He gets it with a W. Back in return. But Caps is here too. It's a house party on the top side of the map. And this is, if you did not watch LEC Meta, Greg is an absolute menace. Oh, oh it's the alley oop. He should just stay as the cause because he does so much damage. It's getting lower and he takes it! PSG! We need to uh, really fast decisions. Let's, let's think more. Okay. Yeah, Good job. It. Good job. Nice comeback. Perfect. Is he just going to 2v1? He he just, he's just on Katurn. He flashes in. The axe is down. Anji. Broken Blade does not care. You cannot stop this Viking. Is oh, it? Yeah, I'm really strong. Yeah, I'm really strong. Fast flash. Fast flash. I'm really strong. I'm really strong. I'm really strong. Yeah, yeah. Harry Nolt. Harry Nolt. We win this. We win this. Go, 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 go. But his health bar's already blinking. You've now leaping 40 CC immune, but will it be enough? Brokeblade still standing. Brokeblade still cutting through the entire team. Waco gets turned into a little snowman. G2 2 0 in PSG, qualifying to the bracket stage. Today is G2's day. Have yet to drop a game here in MSI. Chilling, you know, like singing, just having a good time.